And you know that they'll produce some other ones. You know there'll be other loops. But there's a certain amount of, of second guessing that goes here with people who are trying to dream up something which will have the right effect when it's gone all the way around the loop, trying to remove the uh, issue that you've currently got. It's a, a, a thorn in your side. Okay, so this is the model. It's very similar in some ways to the model of doing science, but it's got this, but when you do web science, it's, it's got, it, it's different from other things because of this piece of the bottom here, the jump between the, mi the micro and the macro. Uh, uh, and uh, many things, of course, have combinations of technical and social elements to them. So this has got lots in common with different, the way different sciences work and different pieces of engineering. But this is this sort of engineering. This is designing the web or designing something on the web. This, here's an example of designing something on the internet. This is you know, reverse engineering. So let's start off with, you can know, imagine what folks who came before me, okay, the internet was before the web, separate things, 20 years apart. The internet is connecting computers. The web is this information space of web pages. So, before the web, I could use email. A lot of computers were connected to the internet. But you could move files from one place to another, but you couldn't send messages. And somebody decided that it would be kind of neat to be able to send messages to a person rather than to a disk. And invented this idea of the, 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 uh, internet messages, as they think we call them, which had two parts to it. It had the store and forward messaging system, which is the technology, including the simple mail transfer protocol. And that, but that technology was deployed in a world in which all the people who ran internet computers at that point were basically friendly. They were very happy to run a computer which in its spare cycles would send any email which it got to an appropriate destination so that it would be forwarded through the network and eventually end up at its final destination. They were very happy to sit and receive email from anybody in this friendly academic environment who wanted to send an email because they knew that would be a friendly academic person who was sending an email and it was something that they should read. And so the email system was very effective. It was very effective. And academia was connected. It was an under, and the internet was used under the acceptable use policy in the US. Right? And that all, but then it depended on both pieces the technology and also the social piece. And when then the email became very, very popular <coughs> and so exciting that commercial use was allowed, and when a large number of consumers were then available, then suddenly it was as though a parameter had been changed past a critical point. And suddenly there was a phase transition. And now our emails are flooded, our email boxes are flooded with spam. And we're in a situation where we have a huge issue. Uh, and that is in fact, so the digital design did not involve spam, but it involved a friendly community. And now the email system is being tweaked so that it can operate in an unfriendly community where people have to try and get your attention whether you like it or not. So that was the design of email. It happened uh, a while before I went to the web. Yes, let's look at the same back and look at how. Where the, uh, oops, excuse me. Uh, the process of designing the world wide First off, you start with an issue. This is all very nice, but there it was at CERN in Geneva, lots and lots of interesting computer systems. CERN is a great place because people come there from all over the world and they bring all sorts of different computer systems together. And they run all kinds of different operating systems on their computers and they run all kinds of documentation systems. And because they come from different home institutes and they're paid by different home institutes, there's nobody really with a big stick and some of them all use the same computer or the same operating system or the same documentation. <laughs> and in fact, I'm very glad. Because that diversity is part of what makes them tick, makes it resilient, makes it an exciting place to be, makes it a creative environment. So here I am, trying to, as a software engineer, just as a professional software engineer, I'm there to try and help them put the system together I'm trying to work with other people, I'm building something which will accept, send messages to other people's software, I need to find out what these gadgets do, where, which computers are there, how they're connected, and all, these, all the information is somewhere on a disk, everybody's written on a disk, nobody writes notes anymore without typing into some disk somewhere, somewhere it's going round and round, maybe you can magnetize iron oxide, but you can't guess it, what you actually do is intercept people in the corridors. You find them on the way to coffee. In fact, the coffee, the first place, the, 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 the 
my first visit was uh, 10 years earlier, in 1980, the coffee place was actually a very crucial intersection of four corridors. And it had these uh, tables like this standing up, and you could sit on those tables and just wait if you needed to introduce somebody to uh, the parameters they need to use or the equipment they needed to use. You'd wait until the people responsible for those things came by and plucked them out of the flow, you put them all, buy them all the coffee, get croissant, and then just ask what, you know, what, what the global variable you would, would be called, which everybody on the planet, well, everybody in the would have access to, which would be incremented every time a zip pulse came around or something. So, I found that coming from a very tree-oriented sort of structured analysis, structured design, sort of software engineering uh, place, I, I, I found that, I guess, a little too web-like. And uh, also, I need a little, a little help to, to help me uh, remember this. And I thought it would be kind of nice if all, this, if all the <coughs> documentation about the different things could be available. So we had, we had a problem. Couldn't access this information. And it became apparent that after playing with a few uh, attempts at moving data from one system to another, that in fact, you can imagine a virtual system which all these documents were in. And if you imagine the virtual system which they were all in, then you could implement that quite easily by just making these little adapters, web servers, <coughs> so that without changing how people man manage their data, you put data on the back. Okay, so it's a fairly straightforward idea. It involved two pieces. It involved, if you like, this technology piece, your eyes, HTTP, HTML. But also, it involved incentives. It involved the fact that people were going to get find places by making links. And the fact that actually people were proud to have their web page linked to developer places. That actually people found it really made their life easier. Sometimes with early websites, people made the links there 